For the past two years, the Lotus story has been unedifying. It's been hard to decipher anything tangible from within the madness. New racing cars most weeks, bizarre road car strategies, and of course, Swizz Beats. But underneath it all lies one irrefutable fact. When it has time and cash, Lotus makes some of the best sports cars in the world. So today I'm forgetting about politics and I'm putting aside negative thoughts, because we're at Hethel, the home of Lotus. This is the new Lotus Exige S, and it might just be the best Lotus road car ever made. So welcome to the new Lotus Exige S. I'm really glad to be driving this car. What we have basically is an Exige with a different back end on it, a new subframe out back, a new rear suspension, a very modified chassis, a modified body, and an Evora S powertrain in it, which is the supercharged Toyota motor. So, 350 horsepower, 295 foot-pounds of torque, and the car weighs 1176 kilograms. A bit porky for something with an Exige pad on it, but don't forget, a GT3 RS 4 litre is 200 kilograms heavier, so it's still a lightweight vehicle. What you need to know is, this car is fantastic! At last, we have something tangible from the new Lotus. We don't have torque and nonsense five model plans that no one believes. What we have is a car that I think takes the game to the GT3 like nothing I've driven in the last few years. This thing is a corker. We're going to talk to Matt Becker, the guy that engineered this car, about what he's done, him and his team have done, to turn the Exige into a pretty awesome performance car. Not that it wasn't already. But for now, I want to talk you around some stuff that really interests me on the track. Circuit's very damp, as you can see from the outside shots. It might be a bit damper than it was when we shot those now. This car has some very clever systems in it. So before we just talk about the engine performance and the way it drives and what it feels like, I want to talk you around the systems. This has got Bosch's latest brain in it, basically, with ESP. It's got traction control. It's got electronic brake force distribution. It's got understeer control. It's got everything. I reckon this thing will do your maths homework if you ask it kindly. So we're starting out in touring mode, okay? There are effectively four modes for the chassis. There's touring, there's sport, there's race, and then there's everything off. Touring gives you all the help you could ever want. So I come out of this very wet corner, I've got my foot absolutely buried, and it does everything for me. Second gear into this hairpin, there you go, flat on the throttle. Can you hear it? I'm absolutely flat down. It's doing it all for me. I wind the gas off. This is a billy-proof car. It's awesome. Um, here with uh, Matt Becker. Matt, what's your title? What's your job title? Uh, Chief Engineer Vehicle Dynamics. Chief Engineer Vehicle Dynamics. Okay, so ultimately, the way this new Exige S behaves is kind of your problem. Yes. Okay, so I've got confidence in the car yeah. in the way I would never have confidence around it, certainly in the wet, mm -hmm. in a Lotus. Now, obviously we've got this new rear axle assembly, talk me through that. Yeah, what we've done with the new Exige is increase the rear axle stiffness by roughly about 100%. Um, so what that does is as you put the steering input into the car, the rear gives you much more information much quicker. So what that does is that actually gives you more confidence when you're driving around the circuit. How much is the tyre technology constantly progressing? How much is that helping as well? I think tyres, yes, they have progressed significantly, but also our knowledge of suspension systems has also progressed significantly as well, which, which kind of balances the whole system together. So, if you wanted to, the EZGS will pretty much drive itself for you, courtesy of Bosch and some calibration work from Matt Becker and his team. Next step, sport. This is quite interesting. So sport, as you'd think, it gives me sharper throttle, it opens a bypass valve in the exhaust so we get more noise, and as you'll see, it gives me some slip. Okay, so let's try a bit of slip, shall we? Oh, just moving around a little bit. Feel the tyres nibbling away at the asphalt a bit more. So we're breaking into the chicane, down the second gear. I'm gonna give it a boot full now. And we do get some slip, but not much. I just have to sort of make a little correction and it's there for me. Again, braking, great braking performance from this Pirelli course start. Flat on the gas. I've got a bit of slip, but really I'm having to do not an awful lot. A bit more aggressive. I've got a bit more exhaust noise, but I don't really get that inside the car. Really, I'm a bit more wind rush, supercharger noise, stuff like that. 
car feels very exciting. What happens next though when we go to the next mode kind of takes the ZS away from other conventional chassis systems that work in this way. When I go to race mode now, instead of getting what you'd expect to be, which is more slip, what you get is the full brilliance of the traction control. So we lose the understeer control. That wasn't there in the sport mode either. That's only there in the touring mode. This is barking now what happens. Get this. The sensors and the brain, the ECU, will now learn the mu level, that's engineering speak for grip level, on the surface. And it's a really slippery day today. So what's happening is the computer's learning. Okay, so I go into second gear and I just bury the throttle and I get, look at that, hardly any slip. Less slip than I had in sport mode. And I just keep it buried and it does it for me. And I really have to tell you how slippery it is out there. It's amazing. This is the most sophisticated chassis system or chassis electronics I've driven on a road car. I honestly think it is. The only car that comes close is the 458, but the 458 still doesn't give you this feeling of having almost the hand of God helping you through each corner. It's, God, it's incredible. You know what, it's, it's impressive, but is it enjoyable? Yes, it is. It's not what I personally want. I want to be in control of the car, but you can't help but admire it. Again, slippy second gear, hairpin. You can hear the torque being cut, can't you? Again, I'm going to come into this corner, wide open. I'm absolutely wide open now. It's just... I have to make a few alterations, but otherwise, it's doing it for me. Very impressive. Okay, we'll take a break there for a minute and talk about the actual performance of the car. 0 to 100 miles an hour, 8.5 seconds is fast. Is it a great engine? It's an effective engine. It's not an engine like a GT3 that makes you think, oh my God, I need to marry this car. It gets the job done. It revs really hard to about six and a half and then gets a bit breathless. It's got loads of torque though, and on the road I'm sure that's very, very helpful. Steering, beautiful. They've made some big alterations to the steering, and I just think this car steers beautifully. It's geared just the way your brain thinks the car wants to go through the corner. It's just right. Just right. Gearbox, Lotus always struggle with gear changes because obviously you've just got a cable going back to the back of the car. This one, again, for them, as good as I felt from them. As a performance car package, it's mighty impressive. Mark my words, at the end of the year when the magazines start doing all their car of the year tests, this thing is going to be right up there with the very best of them. It's still quite a small car, isn't it? inside um how do you think i mean in performance terms it's, it's right up with the gt3 isn't it it's a fast car yeah. how do you think someone that's being in a gt3 is going to respond to having such a small cabin lack of luggage space that sort of stuff i mean do you think that the, just the just the dynamic capabilities of the car is going to be enough to impress them i personally feel it probably is i think it is because i mean you, you know you obviously have driven and you owned gt3s as well i mean to drive a gt3 I think you need to be a more experienced driver. This car gives you all the information you need. It's a very easy car to drive quickly. It doesn't scare you, it just rewards you. We think, what, 750 is possible at the ring, maybe? I think around that, I mean, yeah, somebody who's braver than me, maybe yourself. We've got to have a go, haven't we? Yeah, exactly. I'd love to have a go. Um, so you've sold 332 of these. I think you could sell more. And, and I'll leave this with you, you know at the end of the year when you do the sort of magazine Who's going to be the best tests? I think that scene with the strongest shout for a Lotus in a long time, would you agree? I hope so, yeah. Would you think I was mad if I said it's the best Lotus I've ever driven? Uh, no, not at all. Well, what's better? I can't think of a car that's better than that that you've done. Well done, man. Thank you. I just can't remember the last time I drove a car at Hethel and I felt so secure in these conditions. If I've been driving a Series 1 Exige now, I'd have had about four or five proper gusset eating moments. But I'm not in this because it's just helping me so much. Still has an open differential. I suppose my only gripe is that in the wet now, I think it needs a little bit of locking assistance because they've got so much more support on the back axle now with the rear roll bar that it could just do with being able to get a little bit more traction when you're coming out in second gear, but I'm spitting hairs. This is a great car really feels alive underneath you and yet helps you. 
And the last chassis mode, well, that's to turn everything off. And then you could argue this thing does come alive one further stage. It could do with a bit more of a some kind of locking dip when you're doing that kind of stuff, but it proves the inherent balance of the chassis is there. The car feels supple, feels balanced, just feels yeah, very, very talented. I'm so glad Lotus has made this car. It exists, it's real, it's not part of some king five-year plan. Oh god. Love it.